Uh, so I think we have everybody here, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so thank you all so much for coming. It's exciting to see people interested in our talk. Um, you know, it's going to be a really interesting talk, and I'm sure a lot of you were inspired by kind of, I don't know if you could hear me, um, inspired by the title and kind of what it meant. Hopefully it got some of you mad, um, some of you excited. Um, but my name is Cody Moiseev. I'm a senior interactive designer at the First Movement here in Denver. There we go. Uh, and I'm Dan. I'm a front-end developer at the First Movement. Um, so the First Movement is a digital design agency here in Denver. We also have an office in Pasadena. And we specialize in digital design and strategy for um, some companies like Lexus, Netflix, DaVita, GABF, um, some of those clients. Um, and the purpose of this talk today is really talk about relationships between designers and developers. You know, I'm sure a lot of you have experienced relationships and get kind of sour, can go sour, go bad, um, where there's a lot of arguments or maybe things aren't going quite well. Um, so we really want to talk about our own experiences and kind of what has worked really well for us to build really strong relationships and focus on the projects that we've worked on. Um, the, the title of this talk was really inspired by last year's uh, conference, uh, one of the after parties, obviously. Uh, I, I went up to Drew and I told him, I have this idea for a talk. Um, it's fuck you developers. <laughs> Uh, and he's like, do it. Like, we've got a ton of developers here. It'd be nice to hear from a designer. Um, and obviously, Dan came in as well, because if I stood up here telling you guys all to F off, then you'd probably, it wouldn't end well. So, um, so Dan's here to kind of give his vision as well. Um, so I apologize if the name offended anybody or was a little too crass, but I think it really highlighted on um, kind of what we want to talk about. So. Without further ado, forget you developers. Um, just kidding, let's be friends. Uh, ten and a half steps to better communication. Uh, step one, talk early and talk often. They say the key to any good relationship is communication, and that's obviously no different than working with a designer or developer. Um, one thing we've done at the first event, as I'm sure a lot of you guys have as well, is we've switched to an agile agency. So we're pulling in our developers, we're pulling in our account, our project managers, everybody at the very beginning of the project. That means everybody has a chance to voice their opinion. Everybody's kind of involved. So unlike a waterfall where a UX designer is making a lot of the decisions up at the front, passing that on to dev, or I'm sorry, designers, and then the dev kind of being at the end and kind of, well, we've already approved this by the client, or you know, it's already gone through the process where devs don't have an opinion. Uh, we talk early, we talk often. So Dan and I are communicating from day one, talking about ideas, drawing on wireframes, drawing out wireframes, and doing a bunch of communication really early. That way we're on the same page and both of our opinions are heard. Nice, you summed it up. <laughs> um, I get this one. This is one and a half. Um, and this is kind of a quirky little one that we discovered through working together so long. As we started exploring like interactions and animations and stuff like that, um, I could actually just turn to Cody and be like, you know what, I'm thinking it's gonna go like, beep. And he could get pretty much exactly what I was going for. Or he'd turn to me and be kind of like, you know, it needs to be more like So it's like, this is kind of a play on like, find the fun little communication method that works for you and really kind of bank off of it and use that as like your fun little fallback or just discover little nuances between the way you communicate and kind of leverage those and have a lot of fun with it. So that's why it's 1.5. <laughs> It's an addition to yeah, it. and just just for clarification, I was more thinking like, um, <laughs> just just to get that one totally clear. But yeah, it, it's not going to work for everybody. But this is something we found. It's really quirky, but it works super well for us. So if you can find that one quirky way to interact, like it helps you understand each other so much better. Um, number two, argue, disagree, and question each other. This might seem counterintuitive, but it actually is really effective. So obviously, uh, our footnote here: don't be a dick about it. Um, but I think it's really important to build a relationship well enough with your designer or your developer that you're able to kind of be like, you know, that doesn't make sense or that's not going to work for this reason. Question what they're doing. Don't just kind of accept it for true. Um, disagree. Kind of work together for a common goal as opposed to kind of having personalities get in the way. Yeah, I'm a total dream killer for Cody. He'll come up with something and I'm like, well you know, man, that, that just straight up won't work, but I'll let him know kind of why. And we challenge each other a lot by, he'll kind of challenge me to push my development further, and I'll challenge him to kind of push his design further. And it's based a lot of like, we, we disagree and we argue. So it's just 
it's a lot of challenges, but it creates growth ultimately. Yeah, I think there's often a stereotype. Uh, maybe this is just me, but I've called my developers dream crushers before because <laughs> I could present this awesome idea and they're like, no, just go back into your quarter. <laughs> and on the other hand, like a lot of times developers look at designers and be like, you guys have no idea what I do. Like, just move some pixels around, okay? Mm, never keep a secret, ever. <laughs> this is a... Uh... This is kind of about like you don't want, there's a stereotype since he kind of just spoke of that, that I feel like developers, we look at designers and think they're just constantly lobbing grenades over at us. And it's like, well, shit, we've got to build that now. Um, yeah. And this is kind of like, don't let those be grenades. So it's, it's kind of on both sides, like talk to each other from the get go. Don't keep a secret. Um, as Cody's mentioned before to me, like designers kind of dig having a fully polished, pretty, beautiful thing that they can send off because they're very meticulous. So that's kind of a secret though, because then it's like, he goes away and like designs for a long time and then all of a sudden tosses it at me. And I'm like, what the heck is this? And I had no say from the get go. So the idea is, you know, don't keep any of your stuff secret. As, as a designer, keep the developer involved from the very get go, be like, this is what I'm thinking, let's jam on it. And then as a developer, you know, like any little tricks or tools or kind of like, gotchas that you might have like performance wise and stuff like let them know that before they dig too deep into going like hey can we build this really crazy thing be like well you know we can but performance stuff kind of might get in the way blah 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 so you know don't keep that secret because ultimately you're shooting for the same goal you shouldn't be trying to burn each other uh just a show of hands how many in here are actually designers consider themselves designers oh awesome that's yeah. super cool um, so I think there's there's a tendency, I don't know if this is true with everybody, but there's a tendency, especially with designers, exactly like Dan said, like we want to make sure it's fully polished. We want to like get it right before we're kind of sharing that off with people. So we tend to kind of like hide and be like, don't look, it's not done because they're going to be like, well, why is that like that? And I'm like, I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> like, hold on. Um, but if you kind of just like preface that, be like, hey, I'm working through this. What do you think about this? Or I'm kind of having an idea around this. Like, do you think this is possible, or how can we kind of approach this in a different way? Um, that's 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 for him to know. <laughs> um, number four is to trust each other. So obviously, like in Dan and I's case, we sit right next to each other. So there's a certain level of trust that we have to build between each other. Um, I think a really great example of this is. We've worked together long enough that there's an instance where if I'm really busy, if I'm working on something else and I can't get to something for Dan, or if I'm blocking him from development, I can just kind of work out a sketch real quick on a piece of napkin and say, this is kind of what I'm envisioning. And he could at least start with that. I trust that he'll be able to kind of take that and run with it and make decisions that are for the better of the project. Um, and I think on the other side, there, there's a level of trust in Dan and me a lot of times if if we're going to a client meeting, you know, I'm not going to go into that meeting and the client's going to be like, hey, can we actually have this parallax masonry design? Um, and I'll be like, sure, absolutely. Like, we could keep the same budget and timeline and fit that in. Um, no, I, I'll, I'll go in there and I'll be like, you know, that's a great idea. Let me go back and talk to Dan about it, figure out kind of a really good solution, like not making promises. Dan trusts me that I'm not just going to go in there and screw him over most of the time. <laughs> Build, building, breaking, and building again. This one, all of these kind of build up on each other. There's kind of like this core theme. And this one is really like, since you're talking early, since you should be getting involved with each other's process early, like don't be afraid to just hop right into the prototypes as like a developer or a designer. And like, don't be afraid if it sucks. Like, go ahead and just prototype it as soon as you can. And I mean, there's only so much you can do, but like talking back and forth. We've gotten to a really good point where we can just kind of be like, I want it to be like that, cool, okay. And then we'll just start jamming on it on either side. There's not a lot of conversation because it's, it's a lot quicker if you just jump into the actual thing. And oftentimes it sucks, we don't use it. Um, there's a few examples of various projects where I go and prototype something and I'm like, this is great. And then of course the client's like, that's cool, we don't care, and they don't use it. But the the nice part about it is we got to talk and kind of like build something together, uh, even if it is like a little light prototype and get both of our ideas like physically manifested. 
Um, and then you got to break it and then just try it again and just keep doing that process until something finally comes along. So. Um, number six, don't fear the unknown. This one is really interesting. It's, I think it's a lot easier for designers in some cases to be willing to kind of like come up with crazy new unique ideas because, you know, the world is our, there's no limit. I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, the world is your oyster. Um, but as a developer, obviously you have timelines, you have budgets. You're kind of at the last rung where, you know, if the client's late on a uh, feedback, then you're late on getting what you need. Um, but I think Dan is really great about this, about not fearing the unknown, be willing to explore ideas. So a lot of times, you know, I might say, hey, like, I'm, I'm having this idea, I'm thinking through this thing, what do you think about that? And Dan will kind of just like think and look off in the distance, he's like, maybe I could do something like that. And he starts kind of like going heads down to his computer and trying to figure it out, going back to the prototyping. Um, and as a designer, I think you should be doing the same thing. So if you have this idea for this really cool interaction, like do yourself the service of like looking it up yourself and you know, developers, like designers may not like know, like they might show you something like, hey, what about this? And you're like, that only works on like the latest Chrome. But at least they're kind of like trying and they're trying to explore different options and they're really trying to learn. I think Dan's really good about this. Um, we've done a project recently with an internet service provider and like Comcast or CenturyLink, similar to that. And we're totally changing the way you interact with your provider. And what we've done is instead of kind of like promotionals and hero carousels and everything like that on the homepage, we've really simplified it to the user making a sentence. So they build a sentence and then we're able to direct them on the site based on that. Um, it's something we've never done before. We're not really seeing it out there much, but it's something we explored and it turned out to be really effective for this game. Yeah, and that, that kind of trust each other thing helps with that. Like I think it's easier to explore the unknown and not have that fear if you kind of know like whoever you're working with has your back in a way or can support you through that. So, you know, if he comes up with a harebrained idea, it's kind of like, go for it, do it. And then, you know, he, he can kind of do that without any, like, uh, this is going to totally suck and I should just scrap it before I even try. So. <laughs> I, I've almost drank all that wine. Um, this is mine. <laughs> And it's uh, like, this is, this is kind of a given, runs off the same thing. Like I said, they all piggyback, it's really cool. Uh, but this is like learn new skills and it goes both ways for sure. As uh, developers, you know, learn a little bit about the design world, talk to your designers and like be like, hey, you know, what's the deal with typography? What's the deal with color theory? The and get, typography. what's the deal? <laughs> <laughs> You know, get to like learn things from them so that you can have that kind of conversation with them. And don't, you know, you could go and try and do it after hours on your own through like tutorials or treehouse or something. But like you have the best resource there in that same room, like somebody else who's doing it and that's their profession. But inversely, like designers, you know, you might not need to know how to code a whole damn website, but like at least know a bit of CSS and like know the inspector so you can hop in. And like Cody does this all the time, and at first I was really annoyed with it. But he'll hop, he'll hop into my code and like be like, "Oh, what if we change this to blue?" And then like just screws around with it in Inspector, and it's like all the buttons and like some other shit's blue, and it's like, "All right, okay, that actually kind of works." So then I'll I'll take it and put it in. But like now it's nice to know that he can test that because he learned those skills, and and you know, or I'll I'll he'll ask me like, "Hey, how does that work?" And I'll just kind of like walk him through it but it actually saves a lot of time. He doesn't have to ask me anymore, like, what happens if we do this? He can, did I shut up? <laughs> uh, yep. This is the kid voice. This sucks, because I'm a really quiet talker, too, so let me know if I'm done. Ooh, microphone. Um, yeah, so he just, it saves a lot of time, and, and I encourage it. I lost my train of thought when this died, so I'm sorry. Cody, take it away. Well, I would say, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would say for any of you designers that have a brand, uh, hopefully a lot of you are learning the skills, but since the designers are getting to know kind of some basic HTML stuff more and more, but you're doing yourself an incredible disservice if you're not like at least figuring out some of the basics. Um, I can at least go in and understand enough to talk to Dan about problems, and that's kind of like, uh, when you do something like this, there's like no premise of why we're doing that or what it's going to cause or anything like that. So it 
it gives you ammunition. So when you go to your developer and talk to them about an idea, you're not just scouting things off just because, but you have some like reasoning behind it. Did you say ammunition? I came in on that at the tail end. So number eight is to ask questions, even the stupid ones. It's way more valuable to look stupid and ask a question and be smarter because of it than to not want to look stupid, not ask the question, and then never realize kind of why something is happening. So it, it's something that it could be as something as simple as like, like we were talking about learning new school skills, like, oh, like, what are you doing to make that button have rounded corners? Or, you know, Dan can ask, like, why are you doing that that way? So Dan's really great kind of asking, like, hey, like, maybe it's something like, why did you make this button bigger on this one page? So instead of kind of like, just going like, oh, well, that's stupid. This button's bigger. Now I have to like override that on this page and do something different. Like he could ask me, I'll be like, oh shit, you know, I fucked up. Like just use the same button styling for that. And now he's kind of saved himself some time and we're all on the same page just because of one of my little mistakes. Yeah, and kind of carrying off of that, like oftentimes you do have questions and like questions tend to create tension. So like if you don't ask your designer like why you did something and you're just like, oh, Fucking jerk made all these different, you know, different font sizes, blah blah blah. You're like, you could sit there and just like pine over that and just get really upset at them, but not ask them, but then do it anyways because you're stubborn. Or you could just go and be like, hey, why? And then it gets resolved. So just ask questions all the time, even if you're like, oh, they clearly did this for a reason. Maybe they didn't. Like they might have made a mistake. And inversely, like, like designers ask why it doesn't refer to comp, you know? Like, please refer to comp. Please, please refer to comp. You know, like, ask why it doesn't because, you know, maybe we made a mistake or maybe as we were like running along in our development, it's like, you know what, this actually works a little bit better. You know, as I discovered, like I'm building this out, like this size or this color, like kind of worked better and how do you feel? You know, like instead of being like, they're a jerk and they didn't match it. So always ask questions of each other and don't assume they're trying to totally kill whatever you made or make stupid decisions, so. Oh, this one, this one's mine. Oh, I get so confused. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, is kind of like build break repeat, just um, on, a, on a different level. Um, you might have like the most killer communication in the world and you're just like, this project's rad, it's going so well. Me and this guy are best buddies. You know, we're going to go camping later. Um, <laughs> we won't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, and then it crashes and burns, and the client's like, that sucks. And you're like, ouch, that really sucks. And it's really easy to turn to the guy next to you, or girl, and be like, you just screwed up so bad. It's not their fault. It's not your fault. It just didn't work. Like, you know, embrace that and learn from it and talk to whoever you're working with about that. Like, don't try and point fingers and don't try and be like, ah, oh, well, screw the client too. Like, you know, figure out what went wrong, embrace it together. Like, that's kind of the, the benefit of having other people is like, you don't fail by yourself, like you fail together. So then you kind of have that like net to fall on and be like, okay, what did we do? And you're not totally alone in it. So embrace it together. Yeah, and I would say even, you know, maybe a project went really well, like you launched and the client loves everything but the designer developer you're working with just fucking sucked. Like you guys didn't get along. There was like a lot of bitter feelings against each other. But um, you know, don't let those emotions shake. <laughs> don't, let, don't let those emotions carry over to the next project and just like start the project off on a bad note because you're like, I worked with this designer last time and he sucked. Um, like start fresh and kind of learn from what didn't work last time. Maybe it was the way you guys communicate. Maybe you weren't asking questions. Maybe one of you weren't pulled in at the right times um, and kind of build off of that as opposed to kind of starting off in a bitter mood. Um, and number 10 is really just make the most of it. So obviously we've talked a lot about this idea of communication, working together, but you know, the reason everybody is here today is because you love what you do, you're passionate about something, so you got into a career doing that. And that's the same thing with the designer developer you work with. They had passions, they followed those, and that got them where they are today. So, you know, the best thing is to really get to understand your developer, designer better, you know, why they're in this, what their passions are. Get to know them on a more personal level, and that will really help understand, like, how to communicate better together, 
what their ticks are, what really gets them off, and different things like that. So I think that's the goal, is to just like build a relationship. You're more than just coworkers. Um, hopefully you end up becoming friends and get to know each other much more better. More better. <laughs> uh, and have fun with it, too. That's like the biggest thing, is just have fun all the time, even when it sucks. And even when you're mad at each other, just try and find a way to have fun with it. Uh, I remind Cody all the time that we are just coworkers. Uh, and he hates Not it, friends. but it's just it's just a fun, <laughs> another dumb fun thing we do. He's like, "That's my friend," and I'm like, "No, we're coworkers." So, <laughs> whoa, 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 so I cry myself to sleep, but that's okay. It's fine. Yeah, um, no, that's but a... but that was our goal today. Uh, again, I'm Cody Moiseev. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at C Moiseev, uh, and I'm Dan Hannigan. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm not very active, but it's at Dan Hannigan, or more importantly, uh, uh, you can join the <laughs> Slack. If you're on Slack, we have a massive Denver Devs Slack. Um, designers can also join, please. Like, it'd be fun to have other people in there. And if you want to join that, you can go to join.denverdevs.com, and it's just like an entry fill. Drop in your email, and you're signed up. Or you can come bug me, and I've got it on my laptop, and you know, whatever. So that was a little quick, uh, do a little time check here. I think part of this is obviously we wanted to open this up because you know these are some examples that have worked really well for us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they're not going to work for everybody. You might have had your own experiences. You might have had other things that don't work. So we kind of want to open it up for questions. <laughs> <laughs> no more we, want to, we want to open up for questions now and kind of see what uh, things that you guys are dealing with.